Hey, I want to show you guys how I created this image right here using Photoshop's Generative AI Fill. Now, you've probably already been experimenting with it. I find it fascinating and also a little bit challenging. You don't always get what you want, especially if you're going for bigger, full backgrounds and that sort of thing. I, I find it really unpredictable in what you get. And every time you redo something, you get something completely different. And so, for the most part, there's so many things you can do with this tool that can be a lot of fun. Now, the other thing I want to mention is, I know this is very controversial. I'm not creating an image here that I'm trying to fool National Geographic and sell it to them or anything like that. This is just an experiment. So, I know that there's a lot of people out there that hate it. I've participated in some of the conversations, but I'm just playing around here and I want to show you what I came up with. So, I went in here and I started playing around with Generative AI Phil on how I could come up with a concept photo. Way back, my stock photo agent has been telling me for decades, think about concepts when you're creating your stock photo imagery. So, it's the summer of uh, 2023, and we had that massive heat dome across the most of the United States, as well as everywhere else in the world, as far as I know. And I just kept thinking about concepts, and the heat, and what's that doing to landscapes in one particular case. And of course, it's affecting everything on Earth. But I wanted to see, or I wanted to come up with a concept that could be used for a landscape photograph. And so I came up with a quick idea. I wanted to experiment with it, and I was very happy with the results. It was a lot of fun. So here is the original raw file. I'm sorry, here's the original processed raw file. I darken the sky down a little bit. The sun's peeking through the clouds at sunrise and, you know, added the usual contrast and everything to make this image pop in a little bit. But I got to thinking about creating, again, the water. And my idea is, you know, it might be kind of silly, but the idea was it's been so hot in Death Valley. I think they were well into the 120s and maybe even hit 130. I, I don't remember. It's been about a month ago. But I thought, I'm going to create a concept photo that says that the groundwater in Death Valley is starting to boil over because it's so hot and creating hot springs. So that's kind of the concept idea. Again, it might be silly, but it also might be a photo that will be tagged as being an AI, uh, a landscape photo enhanced by AI. I don't hide any of that because I know it's controversial, but maybe as a concept photo, it might do something for the stock photo part of my business. So, that's what I decided to do. So, the first thing I did is I came up and I selected the uh, quick selection tool and I just went in here. Let's go back down to the correct layer, base layer. And I went in here and I just tried to go around and sort of collect, I'm sorry, select the bottom of this, but not these ridges. So, Holding down the Alter option, I'm coming back in and sort of coming this way to try to get my selection line to match the ridge of that uplifting part of the salt pan, I think is what you might call it, coming in here. And I did have to go in and really do some fine tuning to make sure that I want the water to be at the bottom of the edge, not part of the edge. So, I found it easier to go into quick mask mode and take the brush tool with white as my foreground color and coming up and making the edge pretty hard. Coming up like that and I'll make it a little bit smaller and then just coming in here and let's see, we're only at 10%. We better make that 100%. All right, and come in and just try to go right along the edge of the ridge. And so this takes a second to, and you can see it's easy to get over the line and then have to go back and do it again. Let's see here. All right, I'm gonna go, to, I'm gonna hit the X key to go back to black as my foreground, which will paint red back on here. And a little bit down in here. And continuing to just go right along the shadow edge. Ah, I'm going to have to go back and clean that up again. All right, let's go ahead, turn off quick mask, and see how that selection looks. Now, that looks 
pretty darn good. All right, there we go. So I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to delete that layer so we can move ahead. All right, that's my selection. I'm going to come up to select, save the selection. And I'm just going to call it pool, it's like a hot springs pool. Okay, so now that we've got it pretty well selected, I'm going to go ahead and open up Generative AI Fill. Now, one of the things that I've done before, or I'm sorry, one of the things that I've learned to do that I think is really important is save your prompts. So here's my original photo, and here are the prompts. And I am copying these prompts just in case they got lost in saving of the file or something like that so that I can get back and and redo the image. So I'm going to go ahead and do generate generative AI fill and I'm just going to paste in the same prompts that I used before which are, let me go back over here, I can read them to you again easier. Create a deep puddle and fill with turquoise blue water with steam coming off the water. That's what I came up with so and that's what how I got what I got. So Let's paste that back in again and see what we get. See if it's anywhere close because I do not find a lot of consistency in getting exactly the same thing by using the same prompts. But we'll know here in just a sec. And, you know, I think the AI is interesting. I've been using it a little bit or testing it, I should say, with my commercial work, which could be, you know, CEO photographed in the studio. Can I put him into a server room? as if I photographed him on location, something like that. And it works okay, except that the results are totally unpredictable. Now, we're all in the learning phase for the most part. If we become masters at prompting, is that going to give it give us more predictable results? Because when I've done magazine work, as an example, they usually know what they want for a background, and that is just shoot him in the server room somewhere or something like that, which I've done. And you know what you're going to get. I can actually quickly email a file to a client. Okay, that worked pretty good. It's a slightly different than what I would have done before, but we have options. There we go. That is more exactly like what I did before. So notice that we've got a real soft shadow. So this AI just knows what's going on, and that's amazing. And this one's got a harder shadow. I think I like that better. That appears to be more realistic. So there you go. I mean, this is a piece of cake. And I created a concept photo. I got a warm reception on Facebook and social media, you know, kind of testing to see what people think of the things that I do. Now, I can easily go in and retouch up some of that dark stuff that's in here. And I'm going to do that here in just a sec. But the point is, this is pretty random, but yet totally works. And I could then go in and, I mean, my edges do not look bad here at all. Now, I've got a mask here. I'm going to Control, Alt, Shift, E, or stamp it, as they say. So now the top layer here is the uh, combined layers of everything below. So I'm going to take, like, the uh, clone stamp. Probably going to be a little more predictable. Come down in here. Hold down the Alter option to sample and go in and just clean it up a little bit like this. Didn't do that perfectly. Didn't do that perfectly at all. <laughs> Let's blow it up bigger. That is always helpful. So we'll come back in. Well, you got two different tones here. So you really got to clone from one tone. And then clone from the other tone. All right, maybe not so bad that way. Then we'll come over here and get rid of these. Uh, it looks like algae. It's what it looks like. I'm going to instead go to the spot healing brush and let it sample rather than me doing the sampling. Okay, much better. Much better. Much better, much better. Okay. This could certainly require a little bit more time than I'm going to spend on it for this video, but it gives you an idea. Okay, so let's back off. And there you go. That is the hot spring in the desert. Now, I asked in the prompts for steam coming off, make it appear cold with hot steam, and it didn't work. 
but I have a ton of plugins that will create steam. So I can go back in and do that later. Now I'll show you one more image that I, I got a little carried away. There's the note, by the way, on my original file that ha shows the, uh, uh, the prompt. So I always have those available in case I click on some of these, which has happened to me. I click on some of them and then they don't come back. Uh, the prompts don't. So, all right, this is the one where I decided to take it even further and add a couple more pools. Now, let me break this down and show it to you real quick. So, uh, let's see. Let's start with the foreground pool. That's the foreground pool. Okay, I like that color there, and I want to leave that the same. Then I came in and I did this pool, and it looks pretty good, but I felt the color was a little bit too green, just like this one over here. So I went in and I added hue, saturation, adjustment layers. See, there's the original. See, that looks a little more green than this one. So I added hue, saturation to match the blue color. And as you'll notice the little arrow here, each of these hue saturation layers is tagged to the, um, is the clipping mask to the layer it's supposed to affect. So the hue saturation for each individual layer like this one here, okay, it's going to affect that. So that's just another option of the same thing. The whole point of this video, though, is to show you how easy it is to play around with your image. If I wanted a school bus right here, it'd give it to me, you know, or if... Uh, I wanted more pools. Might be a little tricky with the perspective here to add more pools, but you understand, I'm sure, what you can do with it. And it really is pretty amazing. So anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of how simple this is to use and hope you can go have some fun with it yourself. See you in another video.